So I'm going to tell you about how large Amish families typically are, how many children they have, what influences this, because it can actually vary depending on the community, other factors. And at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you about possibly the largest Amish family ever. So stick around for that. My name is Eric Westner. I'm not Amish, but I've visited over 5,000 Amish homes and dozens of Amish communities since 2004. I write about the Amish at AmishAmerica.com. So I met so many Amish families doing an unusual job. I actually sold books door to door in Amish communities. Thanks to this job, I was able to observe a lot of Amish families. So what are typical Amish family sizes? Typically, you're going to see a size, an Amish family size of anywhere from six to eight children. Usually, it's in that range on average, but it can vary depending on the community. Some communities are known to have more children. Some are known to have fewer. For example, the authors Stephen Nolt and Thomas Myers in their book, An Amish Patchwork, discuss the sizes of Amish families in Indiana communities. They found that these can range from an average of about six children in the Kokomo community. Kokomo is a small settlement in north central Indiana. The Elkhart LaGrange community, which is the big settlement in northern Indiana, averaging about seven children. The, the Allen County, Davis County settlements, which are a little bit different kind of background historically, Amish, having around eight children. And the Swiss Amish settlements at Adams County, Indiana, uh, with a whopping nine children per family on average. What can influence this? You tend to see the more conservative Amish having larger families, all things considered. And the, you know, quote unquote, more progressive Amish tend to be the ones that have fewer per family. So for example, uh, in the Holmes County, Ohio community, where you have very diverse uh, Amish from different backgrounds, the very plain source and trooper Amish or the uh, so-called Andy Weaver or Dan Church Amish are going to have larger families on average than, say, the New Order community there. Now, that's the average. I've definitely come across Amish families that are a lot larger than just seven, eight, or nine. You see families with 10 children, 12 children, 15 children. Uh, I believe the largest family I ever came across had 18 children. So you can imagine for a woman... She's basically pregnant most of her adult life from about 2022 20, till her early to mid 40s. Another factor that could influence this is farm families. Um, one thing I noticed is that farm families tended to be larger, all things considered. It may be that some farm families are more conservative than, say, uh, on, on, on average than, say, the Amish business-oriented families, which is a big segment of the Amish today. It could be also driven by the fact that farm families need manual labor. So traditionally, those extra hands are put to good use in farm families where you have milking, you have some Amish raising cash crops like tobacco, which is very labor intensive when you're picking and sorting tobacco at harvest time. So what about birth control and family planning? Is that something the Amish do or agree with? Now, in theory, the Amish are against birth control. They believe in children as a gift from God, and interfering with that gift is traditionally not seen as something the Amish do. It's not seen as acceptable. Uh, in practice, however, it turns out that some Amish likely do use different forms of birth control and family planning. Now, the Amish are very anti-abortion, so I'm not talking about that sort of thing, but in terms of contraception, Donald Crable, when he wrote The Riddle of Amish Culture, which was originally published in 1989, I believe, found examples of just minimal use of birth control, both natural and artificial means of birth control. So by natural, that would mean something like uh, the rhythm method. Crable wrote that he saw it as a modernizing trend, uh, a shift from fate to choice, is how he described it. In a later book, An Amish Paradox, which came out in 2010, which was a study of the Holmes County Amish settlements, the authors Charles Hurst and David McConnell found some interesting attitudes towards birth control among some Amish in that very diverse community. For example, an old order woman commented that artificial birth control is wrong if used for selfish reasons, but it's okay for married couples if used for health or emotional reasons but only barrier methods, okay? So that was one 
Uh, that was one older Amish woman's opinion. Is that something that all Amish are going to agree with? No. They also found another, a new order Amish father uh, said that a lot of Amish use birth control even though we have a conscience against it. But most don't use the pill because it's seen as taking away life. So barrier methods as opposed to chemical methods uh, or hormonal methods may be more likely to be found among the Amish. Now, do these attitudes represent the bulk of the Amish or a large segment of the Amish? These two quotes are probably from more progressive-leaning Amish, progressive in certain ways, more modern Amish, for lack of a better term. There are many Amish that would not agree with that. All right, now, how many would? That's a question we don't really have an answer for. Uh, you can look at the size of families and, and study, you know, have they shrunk? Have they grown? Have they stayed the same? And there have been some studies looking at, at that in different communities. So finally, in a survey taken by the authors of An Amish Paradox, they got a somewhat interesting response. Over three-fourths of the Amish respondents said that they strongly disagree or disagree with birth control. However, they found that 13% somewhat agree with the use of birth control. So in this, I think you see just the modernizing trend in some, in some ways affecting certain segments of the Amish, right? And the Amish are not one uh, unified, monolithic, identical, you know, copy-paste body. That's always important to keep in mind. But you can see that at least in certain segments of the Amish, there is likely birth control being used. And you can, you can kind of deduce that by looking at family sizes and comparing them between you know, the, the more progressive and the more conservative Amish, for example. That said, Amish belief remains strongly against the use of birth control. That's the traditional Amish teaching that birth control is wrong, that children are a gift from God. But again, practices may be changing in certain segments of the Amish due to you know, outside influences in some cases. So I was going to tell you about the largest Amish family ever, or likely the largest Amish family ever. We don't have definitive word that this is the largest one, but I would, if anyone knows of a larger family than this that was Amish in Amish history, let me know. I'd love to hear about it. So uh, there was a man named John Troyer. John lived in the Kokomo, Indiana community, which I mentioned earlier as only having six children on average nowadays. So maybe that's a little ironic for this story, but this is an interesting little anecdote that was taken from the Amish publication Family Life which is a monthly that's been published since the late 60s, very popular among the Amish, Amish writers. This was a piece by an Amishman named Joseph Stoll called Amish and Mennonite Family Names. Uh, Stoll wrote that John Troyer, who lived near Kokomo, Indiana, had an unusually large family, perhaps the largest of all time among the Amish or Mennonites. He wrote that John was first married to Catherine Schrock, who bore him 12 children. Following her death, he married her cousin Caroline Schrock Kendall. Kendall's an interesting name. That's not very, you won't find Kendall's among the Amish today, as far as I know. Anyway, married her cousin Caroline Schrock Kendall, a young widow with two children of her own. John and Caroline, in turn, had 17 additional children. So this made a total of 31 children for John. So, quite a family. You know, was he able to keep all the names straight? I mean, I'm sure he was, but. You know, I grew up in a family, I had one brother, and my parents sometimes called one of us by one name, you know, called, called one of us by the wrong name. And uh, so I, I can't imagine what it was like in John and Caroline's home then. Though, I'm, though I imagine if they had 31 children, they probably weren't all, all under the same roof at one time. At least I hope not. That would have been uh, quite a big house. That might also have been the largest Amish house in history. So I mentioned in this video, I, I was surprised to read that the, the woman's name, last name that John Troyer married was Kendall originally. I hadn't read that in a while, so just kind of looking over it, I didn't catch that when I skimmed it the first time. But I, my surprise was based on the fact that Amish tend to have very common last names. And you may have noticed this phenomenon uh, if you've been to an Amish community like Lancaster County or Holmes County, Ohio, or really any sizable Amish community, you'll see the same names repeat themselves. I go through 10 common Amish last names in this video and give you some background on each one. You can check that out right here. If you want to get more videos like this, just hit the subscribe button. That'll kind of keep you in the loop when we get new videos coming out. 
Talk to you next time.